we are now in the final lap of this course. We are going to be studying the topic of uniform convergence pun power series. In fact, the topic of power series motivates why we need to study uniform convergence. So far in this course, we have tackled many difficult theorems, but it is somewhat disturbing that the only real examples of smooth functions, differentiable functions that really we have understood to some degree are the polynomials. I have invoked sine, cosine, exponential here and there in the passing as examples, but we have not really studied how they are defined and a deep analysis of their properties is not yet done. The correct way, in my humble opinion, of how to define these common elementary functions is via power series. So let's begin with the definition of a power series. Definition. Definition. Let a n in R be a sequence. Be a sequence. A power series. Power series is a formal expression. Formal expression. Expression of the type the type summation a n x bar n n running from 0 to infinity. So this sequence a n is actually from n equals to 0 to infinity. So this is a sequence that is starting at the term 0. Okay. So let me just make a remark. Remark. We often consider consider power series centered centered at some x naught in R. This is just a series of the type. This is just a series of the type summation n equals 0 to infinity and x minus x naught power n. However, the original definition of power series that we have given, the theory that we will develop to study such series is more than sufficient to deal with more these more general series centered at some point x naught. The, it's simpler to study just when the center is just the origin and the theory in the general case is straightforward to generalize. Okay, so for simplicity, I will just concentrate on series of this type. Now, the first question you should be asking is, Let's call this series star. Star is just a formal expression. Is just a formal expression. Okay. Star is just a formal expression. Can we make it into a function of x? Can we make it into a function of x? If, if we set x equal to 0 in star, then the series, series converges, converges to a0. Now, of course, if you look at this series carefully, and if you have the type of listener who is very, very eagle-eyed, you will notice that when I say that this series converges to A0, I am making an assumption about 0 power 0. So I must write this is under the common convention, common convention that 0 power 0 is actually 1. That 0 power 0 is 1. Only under this convention does it happen that star converges to A0. Okay. So in any case, under this convention, we know that when you substitute x equal to 0, the series indeed converges and it converges to the coefficient a0. What about other substitutions? What about other values of x? Other values of x. Thankfully, power series behave very nicely with respect to the set of points where the series converges. That is dealt with in the following proposition. Proposition. If 
the power series power series star converges converges at a point point C not equal to 0 then it converges it converges for all points all points in the set in the set x such that mod x is strictly less than c okay so if it happens that at a particular substitution x equal to c c not equal to 0 the series does converge then it converges for all the points x on the real line whose absolute value is actually less than c let's see a proof of this this is a nice application of the comparison test one of the most powerful tests for studying convergence so let's see so we have that summation a n c power n n running from 0 to infinity converges this is the assumption okay now this means first of all this means first of all that mod a n mod c power n is less than or equal to some capital m which is greater than 0 some upper bound since the sequence converges to 0 since because the series converges to 0 the sequence converges to 0 and therefore the sequence has to be bounded when I say sequence I mean the sequence a n c par n not just the sequence a n okay so the sequence must be bounded therefore we can find an upper bound capital M such that mod a n c n c par n modulus c par n is less than or equal to m which is a quantity that I'm taking to be greater than 0 and this is true for all n in the natural numbers union 0. Okay, how does this help us? Well, suppose, suppose, suppose we take, we take x in R such that mod x is less than c. Okay, suppose we take a point C where uh, we take a point X in R whose absolute value is less than C. Now note that note that mod a n mod x bar n is in fact equal to mod a n mod c bar n into mod x bar n by mod c bar n. Okay, I've just added and uh, it's not added multiplied and divided by mod c power n and by our assumption that mod a n mod c power n is less than or equal to capital M we get less than or equal to M times mod x by mod c the whole power n okay but observe observe again that again that mod x by mod c is strictly less than 1 is strictly less than 1 so by comparison test by comparison test test the series the series summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n x bar n converges absolutely converges absolutely so we got a stronger conclusion we got a stronger conclusion than claimed so we can fix this claim converges absolutely for all points absolutely for all points in the set in the set mod x such that mod x is less than c so what we have shown is if the power series converges at some non-zero point on the real line then in fact it converges in the interval open interval minus c c okay so this prompts the following definition this prompts the following definition this prompts the following definition let summation n equals 0 to infinity a n x bar n be a power series be a power series we set we set r which is called the radius of convergence radius of convergence to be by definition equal to the supremum 
the supremum of mod c such that summation n equals 0 to infinity a n c power n converges. This is c, c power n converges. So, converges. Okay. So, it is you take look at all the points where the series a and c power n converges and take the supremum. Note, note that. So, let me write it as a remark. Remark. Note that. Note that r could be either 0, either 0 or plus infinity. Both, both possibilities can happen. Okay. Now, I am going to leave you with a very simple exercise. Very simple exercise. Show that, show that if x in r is such that mod x is strictly less than r, then, then summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n x power n converges absolutely. This is a very, very simple exercise. It follows immediately from the definition of this radius of convergence and the fact that Whenever you have a point of convergence, then for all points whose modulus, whose absolute value is less than this given, um, um, than mod c, then the series converges. Essentially, the previous proposition plus the definition of radius of convergence will immediately deliver the proof. Okay, so where does this leave us? Suppose we have a series star, we have the power series star. Let me just write it out in full. Suppose we have the power series summation a n x power n, n equals 0 to infinity, we get a function, we get a real valued function, real valued function, function f of x, which is defined to be sum of summation n equals 0 to infinity, a n x power n defined on, defined on minus r, r where r is the radius of convergence where r is the radius of convergence okay so we end up with a function f from minus r r to the real numbers now the one crore question or the million dollar question is the following what about what are the analytic properties analytic properties of f by analytic properties of f i mean things that we have studied in analysis for instance is f continuous is f continuous okay is f differentiable is f differentiable okay what is the derivative of f? If at all f is differentiable, what is the derivative of f? What is the derivative of f? Okay. So, we have these following natural questions and let me just leave you with an intriguing puzzle which is sort of a partial answer to the last question without proof of course. It looks like summation, the derivative, the derivative df by dx would be nothing but summation n a n x bar n minus 1 n running from n running from 1 to infinity okay this is something that is natural to expect when you look at the power series summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n x bar n why is it natural because observe observe that any polynomial any polynomial p of x which is actually given by summation k equals 0 to n a n x power n is a power series is a power series right it's in fact a very nice power series. It's not an infinite power series. It's just a power series that terminates after a point. 
Note that in our definition of power series, we did not require all the coefficients to be non-zero or any such condition. ANs could be anything. So it just so happens that a polynomial is a special type of power series, a power series in which all but finitely many coefficients are zero. Okay, And for polynomials, we have this result that when you differentiate the monomial x power n, you get n x power n minus 1. Therefore, this formula double star is certainly true for polynomials. It's certainly true for polynomials. So, you would expect this to be true for the power series also. In short, what all this motivates is, what all this motivates is, what sort of properties what sort of properties of the polynomials of the polynomials summation n equals 0 to let's say some fixed n naught a n x bar n migrate migrate to the sum to the sum summation n equals 0 to infinity a n x bar n a power series is nothing but a limit of polynomials. At least in the places where the series converges, it's sort of a limit of a polynomial, a limit of polynomials, a sequence of polynomials. So we are interested in seeing we have polynomials, which are about the nicest functions that you can take. Many, many properties are easy to see for polynomials. Do these just migrate to the limit? In this, with relation to these remarks, Let's consider an example. Consider, consider the polynomials, the polynomials x bar n defined on the closed interval 0, 1. Okay. Defined on the closed interval 0, 1. Okay. Now, it is easy to see, it is easy to see, easy to see that that for each x not equal to 1, x in close 0, 1, we have, we have, we have limit, limit n going to infinity x bar n is equal to 0. But limit n going to infinity 1 power n is of course 1. So this limit function, so the limit, the limit of the monomials, of the monomials x bar n converges, converges to the function f of x, which is defined as follows, 0 if x is in close 0, open 1, and 1 if x is equal to 1, which is not continuous, which is not continuous, so the limit of the very simple monomials themselves need not be a continuous function. So something weird is happening even when you take limits of very, very simple polynomials. Now the question is, can we put some hypothesis to ensure that the limit is continuous? And that is the next and the final major topic of this course, uniform convergence. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on power series.